Welcome back to the Great Compromise Podcast. It's been a little while. Victoria, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be back. It is good to be back. It's fun to be doing this again. We've been really busy lately. I apologize to all of our loyal fans. It's not quarantine anymore. <laughs> we don't have all this free time on our hands to, to be recording. We're busy, and it's summer, and so we're enjoying the nice weather, being out and about in the world, so... We haven't been recording. Apologies for that. And so today, we will finally answer the question, are we quitting the podcast? Is it happening? Of course, we're not going to tell you yet. We're going to wait until the end of the episode to tell you. Which you must have expected, right? Yeah, we're not going to just tell you right away. But don't just skip to the end to hear the answer, okay? you got to listen to the whole thing. There are surprises throughout, so don't just skip to the end. You won't regret it. We're also going to talk about all the stuff that we haven't had a chance to talk about while we've been gone. Just, you know, headlines and things that have come up in the news that we find interesting and want to chat about. So, let's start with good news. COVID is over. It's kind of over. It's better. The strains that are coming out are definitely much less dangerous each time. Mm -hmm. So the panic around COVID is understandably lessened. Yeah, I saw a poll from YouGov that they just did in August, which was two days ago, um, that says that only 7% of Americans are worried about getting COVID now. And so that is much, much better than it was. A year ago. Uh, definitely much better than two years ago. I can relate to that. I mean, I think most of us have probably had COVID at least once by now. And the the fear was really built up when we didn't have a lot of information about it. And when the strength of the initial strain was resulting in a lot of deaths and yeah. high risks and everything. And now that you know, so many people have had vaccinations and boosters and a lot more information and research and maybe like years out from your first infection there's a lot less panic yeah between the the vaccinations the boosters and the infections we have hit herd immunity i guess like this was the goal from the beginning is to get to this point as well as we could i think we we limped across the finish line to get to herd immunity and so this is what everyone was saying is the new normal. This is it. We've, we've made it. We have to move on. The strains aren't as deadly, as you mentioned. And yeah, people are still getting infected and getting sick with it. But it's more like the flu. And we don't shut down the whole world when it's flu season. Is it ever going to feel like the flu, though? Because I still get that initial panic when I hear there's a case yeah, like in the office or in the school. And I'm like, oh, no, I was just there. Like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, CDC guidelines are still, if you get infected, you need to stay home for five days. And then you need to mask up for five days. Yeah, but... They don't do that for the flu. With initial panic is more relaxed precautions that people are taking in their personal lives. Yeah, it's not, you we're know, not 100% better yet, you know. I think people are still a little worried about COVID, but it's not how it was, definitely. I agree with that. But what I'm saying is, like, it's never going to feel, for some of us, completely normal or, like, a non-issue yeah. for there to be cases. But also, part of what I attribute that to is the people that are so chill about it that they're not staying home. They are still out running errands and stuff like that. So it's like, how do we know that we're all being uniform in our behavior? Um, and I think that's just like harking back to like lockdown days. Like when there's such a hubbub about it, like how can we not have like... Yeah, I mean, no one... associated issues with this illness. Yeah, we all have like collective trauma over COVID. Yeah. And that might not go away or, you know, not 100% anyways. 
I know I still hear that someone got COVID and I'm like nervous for a second. But they're like, yeah, I was, I was sick for three days and <laughs> it was fine. You know, some, some cases just aren't that bad anymore and that is becoming more normal. So, But on uh, the other hand, it's for a second instead of like, don't wipe down groceries anymore. Don't yeah, like yeah. do all the stuff that we thought was necessary before. Yeah, we're never going back to lockdowns. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And the numbers are going up. I, I checked the CDC numbers. COVID cases are going up. With the start of school, with... Of course. Like, it, it's... You know. I'm sorry to say, summer is coming to an end. Ugh. So it's cold and flu season anyways, and it's going to be cold, flu, and COVID season. It's just... I know. It's it just, just is. It's just life. Yeah. But we're not quarantining. <laughs> we're not shutting everything down. Really, we're not going to mask up anymore either. It just... We're at herd immunity. It is what it is at this point. We're going to live with it like like it's the flu. Do you think that we're past masks being required in doctor's offices and things like that? Like up until last winter, it was still required when you went in somewhere. Yeah. No matter your health status, you needed to wear a mask. Do you think that's going to come back every winter? I think Biden ended the... Mandate? The, the emergency, the, it's not state of emergency, I don't remember what it's called, but basically... Yeah, that it, ended in March. It expired in March or something like that, and so that's when, like, hospitals didn't have to require okay. masks anymore. It was right around there. But that felt weird. It did. Know? Like, I was just used to masking up to go to my doctor, or I didn't go to the hospital at all, but I went into my doctor's office, and, yep. you know, I had to wear a mask, and... But now, it feels weird to put a mask on. You know, it's been, it's been long enough where... I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's uncomfortable again. I'm not as I'm not I as used know. to it. And I'm not in the habit of like breathing with it for hours on my face. Yeah. But I've been seeing more people with masks again because, you know, the school season started and I have yeah. to assume that's why. Yeah, I mean, I would consider wearing a mask on the planes just because the air is gross and people are gross, but not because of COVID. I just think people are gross. I've heard people say they would consider it on planes or in grocery stores around like a peak cold and flu season just because yeah. precautions make sense when you're trying to avoid illness, even if that's the common cold. Yeah, and I get that. I mean, I'm never going to point and laugh at anyone for wearing a mask. It it was a, a good thing oh, that we had masks and if people no. want to wear them for any reason, go ahead. You know, I yeah. might someday too. I don't feel any judgment towards someone that's wearing a mask. No. I'm just no. aware of it. We'll see how that progresses for now. Who knows what a uh, new variant is getting cooked up, but I, it seems like they're all getting easier and easier to deal with. And we are enjoying our new freedom. It's not new freedom, but kind of is. This is the first summer we haven't thought about COVID. It hasn't even really crossed our minds. Yeah, I guess so. I'm trying to remember last summer. <laughs> That's my pause. Last um, summer. What did we do last summer? Where were we? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were still going out, but it was it was a factor for sure. Yeah, I like think we, it were, was. we were We were still a little cautious about the crowds and Yeah, we went to a concert last year and it was at yes. T D Garden and it was full of people. And we were nervous. We were like, this is, we haven't been in a, a crowd we, like this. We wore masks. We wore masks, yeah. We we weren't, we were the only ones that we saw wearing masks anyways near us. Yeah, that was like in the fall. It was in the so. fall, yeah. Yeah, but it was the first time we'd been in a crowd and it felt uncomfortable. In a big stadium like TD Garden, it yeah. was like overwhelming to be with that many people after... Years of COVID lockdowns, yeah. Yeah, and that was like a year ago, like mm -hmm. almost exactly a year ago. So You're right. So things have changed, and we've had a great summer. It's been wonderful. Unfortunately, not podcasting, but having fun out in the world, not worried about getting sick. Yep. So speaking of last fall, do you remember when RSV cases were super high and the pharmacies were running out of medication? I think cold and flu was just insane last fall in general, but I remember I had friends that asked me if I could look for like 
baby Tylenol anytime I went to the grocery store or the pharmacy because it was just sold out all the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, my brother got sick. Like, I had to go to multiple pharmacies before I could even find, like, NyQuil or anything for him. Like, it oh, was just he was so fine. hard. Yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he's a tough cookie. Um, I remember your nephew got sick when we were there. And they had to go to multiple pharmacies to get him something for an ear infection. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think RSV numbers really just threw doctors, offices out of whack. And that was, I think, attributed to people being in lockdown and not getting sick with stuff. And then immune systems kind of being babied. Yeah. That last fall, people got sick with so much stuff. I know personally, it's crazy. I was so sick so much you were sick all the time <laughs> you were you were sick like you had like a week break and then got sick again <laughs> it was this year's gonna be better i was not into it yeah. um yeah that was bad but i bring record, it up i didn't get sick that often just like to say that yeah i don't know how um so the fda approved recently the first vaccine for rsv hmm. um in may they approved it for people that were sick that are 60 and older. And recently they approved the vaccine to be taken by pregnant individuals in their third trimester. And then that would benefit their unborn child, which is just like super cool, especially because RSV leads to like the highest amount of hospitalizations for infants. That's really the largest reason that infants are sick and needing to go to the hospital. And so RSV can lead to LRTD, which is a uh, respiratory infection that can be deadly for the super young, mm -hmm. like infants under a year, and then also the elderly. So it's just really cool that these vaccines have come out and that you can get vaccinated and like help your child before they're even born to really knock down those numbers and prevent that risk. It's just really awesome. So, so you're saying that... The pregnant women get the shot and the kid has it before they're born. So they don't have to get the shot. Exactly. After they, they have it. it's a it. single dose vaccination. They have it forever? And it's called... They don't need a booster? They don't need anything? Abriospo. Okay. I haven't read anything about needing to renew the vaccine, but I wouldn't wow. be shocked if you do. But RSV is not cause for concern in older kids like if a oh. seven-year-old got rsv it would probably just look like a cold whereas if your one-year-old gets rsv that could be deadly so okay so it covers them when they need it most when it could end their life yeah, yeah. exactly wow that's great i didn't know about that it's really cool well speaking of things that make me sick we watched the republican presidential debate <laughs> Yeah, I did feel a little <laughs> nauseous. You were particularly queasy. I at least have a good time watching these debates. <laughs> I enjoy it. I mean, the candidates aren't what they used to be. <laughs> I have to say, I like that Trump wasn't there. What a relief. Yeah, it, it's good not hearing his voice, but of course they talked about him. You have to talk about him. He's the front runner by a lot, so they have to mention him. I am not thrilled with how they're handling it. You can't piss off the Trump base, apparently. And so everyone is, like, supporting Trump, more or less. I mean, like, Vivek said that, Ramaswamy said that he was going to pardon Trump on day one in the office. Like, how stupid is that? Like, just... I'd like to circle back to what a nut job that guy is. Yeah, he's a clown, for sure. He's... He's a whack job. He's kind of like the RFK Jr. of the Republicans. <laughs> but he's trying to get the Trump vote. And so if Trump can't run for office, then they're going to all vote for Vivek, you know? I understand that strategy, but it was more like everything he said was insane. Yeah. And he was really riling up all of the candidates. Like, so much airtime was spent fighting with him. He did something smart, I will admit. So the rules of the debate are you get 30 seconds to respond to anyone who mentions you. And so he will attack people, he'll attack everybody, basically. So then 
they respond and mention his name, and so then he gets to respond too. So he got the most airtime because he played dirty. But it was kind of a smart way to do it. And then Pence got a lot of airtime because he talked over other people and over his time limit. <laughs> That's the other way to go. With He's it. just rude. Yeah, Pence, Pence didn't look so good. Ron DeSantis didn't look good. The dude looks like a deer in headlights. I mean, he he's not ready for the national stage yet. He's doing fine in Florida. But, like, when it comes time for the big stage, he's just not ready. He, he's not He's not ready for this yet. Nikki Haley looked very she good. She handled herself really well. Yeah. She answered some questions well. She's not polling particularly well. But she did really well in the debate. She had very good answers. She seemed very professional. Of course, she couldn't come out against Trump. So there's that. Some people like that. But that wasn't... To me, it makes her look a little weak. But I think she did a good job overall. Surprisingly Chris, good. Chris Christie is the only one who's not afraid of saying that Trump is, like, a bad person and made poor decisions. He's the only one who's not catering to the Trump supporters. Chris Christie's my boy. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I like Chris Christie. I always have. He can't win. I know. It's it's tough. He did not get a lot of airtime during the debate. He didn't get much airtime and he got booed when he called out Trump. He's really the only one who did it. And he got booed. I mean, why is it so hard to call out a guy who's been indicted four times? I guess we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about Trump. Which pains me, physically, because he doesn't need any more attention. <sighs> the biggest clown of all, Donald Trump, can't just go away. He's polling in first by a lot. Astounding. A lot. Astounding. It's like not even close. He's been indicted four times since last we spoke, dear listeners. <laughs> Let's see. Mishandling secret documents, top secret documents. Trying to delete security footage of him mishandling top secret documents. Can we clarify that these top secret documents were in his bathroom? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a good hiding spot. You should see the picture. I don't know if you guys have seen the picture of just like boxes of top secret documents stacked up in a shower right next to the toilet. You gotta look it up. It's It's gold. Solid gold. Really safe. Let's see, what else? Uh, election interference for on January 6th. He got indicted for that. Uh, hush money, of course, to Stormy Daniels. Excellent. And then the most recent case of trying to overturn his election loss in Georgia. So he's getting hit with indictments all over the place. And it's not slowing down his campaign. People love him even more. How? I don't know. He's he's spinning it. Like, they're coming after me. I'm the only thing standing between you guys and the long arm of the law. I, I don't know. I mean, the dude sucks. It's clear he sucks. But his supporters are just rabid and they, they don't care what anyone says. It's really confusing. I was happy he wasn't in the debate. He has nothing to lose from not being in the debate. Well, you've heard Trump speak. It's dangerous for him to open his mouth. Right. He has nothing to gain from being on the debate stage, I should say. He just looks dumber. And in order to be on the debate stage, you have to agree to support whoever wins the Republican nomination. And he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't think he's going to lose, first of all, but he doesn't want to support anyone else if they win. Of course not. <laughs> that would be admirable. Yeah. So, that's Trump. Hopefully we don't have to talk about him again. Um. No, actually, I do have one other thing. Oh, okay. So <laughs> We're talking about him again. <laughs> his court date... Um, was set for his federal election interference case, and yeah. it begins March 4th of 2024. Okay. Which is earlier than Trump wanted it to be, um, but it puts it right in the middle of the Republican primaries. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so it's like a day before Super Tuesday. Um, 
Hopefully he's found guilty. I know. It would just, I don't know, really interested to see how that. That would be nice. Puts like a wrench in things. That would be nice. Actually, the Secretary of State in New Hampshire is considering invoking the 14th Amendment, a.k.a. if you commit treason against the United States, you can't hold public office with Donald Trump. And so that he wouldn't be on the ballot in this state. That is such a good idea. It's a very good idea. And if they pull it off here, other states are going to follow suit. For sure. For I sure. hope so. We're not even a blue state. So if we do it here, the blue states have got it easy. Yeah. I mean, you could still do like a write-in, but... Who cares? He helps. wouldn't have enough. It he helps. Would, yeah. His, his supporters would not write in enough for him to win. For sure. So... Fingers crossed, New Hampshire leads the country like it typically does. I will be crossing my fingers. Excellent. All right, moving on. Let's talk about other criminals. Okay, good. So in San Francisco, incarcerated people have filed a class action lawsuit against the federal court for access to sunlight. What? Interesting, right? So I guess this all started back in 2019. But they recently filed something um, in August. So the suit alleges that jails in all of San Francisco are violating constitutional rights to sunlight. Hmm. This is causing health issues such as depression, headaches, uh, deficiencies in vitamin D, and a depletion of melanin on their skin. Okay, They're that's getting... a stretch, but all right. <laughs> You they're do not, what you can they're not getting to a make tan. your case, apparently. <laughs> they're not getting tanned. Depletion. Uh, so they are getting, at very most, three to three and a half hours outside of their cells in an entire week and often less. Oh, in a week? In a whole week. Yikes. So I'm really on their side in this one. That's, that's awful. Actually, that's actually bad. That's really awful. And so they're asking through the lawsuit for regular outdoor recreation and sunlight, as well as medical treatment for people who request it because of depression, um, effects in their cognition, and, like, other problems that have been created due to weight gain and stuff because they're just trapped in this tiny cell most of the time. Okay. You know what? I support that. Yeah, it actually sounds, like, pretty inhumane. It's prison, but that is particularly bad. Yeah, they they deserve better than that, certainly. I know, I definitely think so. Even Donald Trump deserves a little outdoor time. (laughs) I would argue that other prisoners don't deserve to be in there with some others, particularly the Don. But yeah, definitely some sunlight is good for everybody. Okay, well, that's interesting. I hadn't heard that. All right, what else we got? Okay, so this came up a couple months back, but I definitely want to talk about it. The Supreme Court, who has been making a lot of banger decisions lately. I'm really on board. You heard it here first. (laughs) The Supreme Court is banger. Yeah, man. Banger decisions, one after the other. They don't miss. Uh... Especially lately, they've been doing a great job. So... They ruled against affirmative action in college admissions. I don't know if you heard about that. I know you. I heard about it. Okay, she heard about it. I was talking to the audience. And for those of you who don't know, affirmative action is favoring certain groups of people over others due to perceived disadvantages. Okay? So basically, these colleges, you know, most egregiously the Ivy League schools the highbrow ones. This was Harvard University and University of North Carolina, um, which University of North Carolina is not Ivy League, but still. So they would admit not just based on grades, but based on race as well. And so they, they basically had a checklist of how many of each race they want in each admission cycle, effectively. So they both institutions had lower acceptance rates for Asian and white applicants than black and Hispanic candidates who fell into the same academic decile. That makes sense. So 
same grades that Asian and white students get, they would bring in more black and Hispanic students in, for the same grades. I'm with you. Okay. The Supreme Court ruled that this is unconstitutional. This is actually racism. And you can't do that. It, it should be based on individual merit, not their race. And I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, they have a point. I'm glad you said that. Because this has been really bad for Asian Americans trying to get into these good schools. Asian Americans with the highest possible academic decile have a lower chance of being admitted than African Americans with the fourth decile. Of course, it goes from one to ten. So the best possible grades, and they still have a lower chance of getting in than African Americans with way lower grades. Okay, that's just not fair. I mean... That's awful. To these students who are putting in the time and effort and who work... Who like, killed themselves to get there. And they still can't get in, even with the best possible grades, because of the color of their skin. That's awful. It's terrible. And so, yeah, the Supreme Court did the right thing, and it's unconstitutional. It's not a thing anymore to have affirmative action in college admissions. And we're going to see where else affirmative action is unconstitutional. Hiring, perhaps. I, that would be interesting to see how that goes. Yep. But I think this is a very, very good start and a win for the Asian American community. I definitely think so. And I'll be interested to see how stats change over the coming years because there's always like admission statistics that mm -hmm. colleges release. So, yeah, this just got struck down not that long ago. I think it was in June. So this fall will be a first. This will be the first. It, well, maybe next fall. Maybe they already made the decision. I don't know. We'll probably find out in a year from now. But yeah, it'll I be. Guess you usually get admitted to colleges before. Probably like already. Maybe May. Already admitted it for this semester. But it's going to be really interesting to follow to see yeah. what they're going to do. Harvard already said they're going to try to oh, do something in a loophole, which hopefully is also illegal. <laughs> so we'll find out. Hmm. We're going to keep a close eye on this. Um, but in the meantime, congratulations to Asian Americans. All right, my next news story is going to be international. I'm bringing Ooh. us to Russia. Oh. Yeah, I know, but this one's so juicy. All right, let's hear it. So in late June, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Oof. I might be messing that up completely, <laughs> but he's the leader of the Wagner Group, which is a militia group, not a law firm, just... For those of you who might be confused already. It doesn't um, sound intimidating. It doesn't. I mean, the Destroyers would have been a good name. Just... It would have. Not Wagner and Wagner. Yep. Um, he led a very temporary uprising. And by temporary, I mean one day against Russia's military leaders, including President Putin. Um, Is he president? Is that technically his title? Yes, he is Russian President Va Vlad. Vlad? <laughs> hey, Vlad. Step down then. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, but he doesn't have a term. He's right. a lifelong president. That's nice. I don't think it's supposed to be that way, but, you know. No. That's how it goes. So, then his uprising was mediated by Belarus... And the deal was to end the uprising. The coup. Yes. The, uh, the party. The pitchforks. With him relocating in Belarus and no charges would be pressed against him by and, the Kremlin. And Vlad agreed to this? Apparently he agreed to it. He said, don't you worry. <laughs> no hard feelings. I just need you to move to Belarus, and everything will be fine. Wow, no hard feelings. Awesome. Um, Very unlike him. Seems a little suspicious to me. Well, now, more recently, a plane got shot down. According to a preliminary U.S. intelligent assessment, which I got from NPR, 
they assume that he made good on his threat, which was Putin saying that actually he's decided punishment for those involved in the act of treason would be strongly taken. So who was on the plane? The plane involved 10 people, all perished Mm -hmm. in the plane crash, in quotes. Uh Um, Some of them were top lieutenants of the Wagner group. Oh, yes. As well as our man, Yevgeny. Okay, so... And then three crew members for the plane. Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame. All of it is a shame. But is it a plane crash? Or is U.S. intelligence correct that it was shot down by the Kremlin? Of course it was. Of course it was. Putin was not just going to let this guy go. He holds grudges. That's what he does. Um, But of course the Kremlin is rejecting all accusations. That's also what he does. Okay, so step one. Lead a coup for one day and then give up, get a pat on the head, and a strike some deal. Step two, die by getting shot down. There, There is no step three. I mean, in what world do you go through all the trouble of rebelling and then only do it for a day? Like, you've really got to stand your ground. You can't yeah. let someone talk you out of it. No half measures. You got you to gotta do it all the way or you don't do it at all. And if you're, if you've lived in Russia, I assume that you know the Russian history Mm -hmm. and you know that if you defy the government in such a strong way, especially as Putin is the leader, you are going to die. Well, that's going to get you. So just go big or go home. Like, do not start at all if you're going to give up that easily. I'm very confused as to what his strategy was, but I'm not surprised that he's no longer with us. Yeah, that is the least surprising thing I've ever heard, frankly. Well, of course. It's too bad he didn't go through the coup. That would have been really helpful to everyone else in the world. But he thought he was a special case, you could get a nice deal. And he didn't. He's not. I can understand a coup being very terrifying. I wouldn't even want to live in Russia, let alone <laughs> defy the government. But I think the Wagner Group just... Made some poor choices, starting with their name. Yeah, that was really the start of their downfall. Their name is not intimidating. (laughs) Sounds like a law firm, but anyway. Well, whoever strikes the next coup, hopefully they do better. They learn some lessons from this. I think Putin's intention is for them to be too intimidated to try, but Mm -hmm. I will uh, be paying attention to see what happens next. Well, in the meantime, the United States has sent Ukraine um, $76 billion in aid. And just to compare that to how much the EU combined has sent Ukraine, um, they've sent 26 billion euros. So we are making everyone look bad. Of course, that's all we do. And as I said in our episode about Ukraine, Mm -hmm. it's time for the EU to step up. Of course. I don't know what they're doing. This is obviously not going to have an end in sight, so they need to step up. It can't just be on us. I definitely agree. Moving on to something a little lighter. Twitter. It's terrible now. Wasn't it always terrible? Isn't that what Twitter was about? Kind of. It was just like trash of the internet. It's more terrible now. It's also called X. Oh, okay. You can't rebrand something that's already that that popular, well known. well known. Yeah, Elon has done a terrible job. Also, just like a tiny little side note, I would like to tell HBO, yeah, that they can't rebrand as Max. Okay. Yeah, that was a bad choice too. Go ahead, go back to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't rebrand when your brand is very well known. It's just not a good idea. But anyways. Elon has ruined Twitter. I'm not going to call it X. And now it's just full of Nazis. It's just a lot of Nazis. Ew. And anyone can just pay to be verified. And so, like, just a bunch of verified Nazis running around. And so the old accounts that used to be verified by being, like, notable or famous, 
yeah. are not verified, so you don't know who the legitimate accounts are anymore. You just see the Nazis. Does anyone use Twitter anymore? This sounds really awful. Well, Trump used it again. <laughs> We're talking about him again. <laughs> but yeah, Trump's back on Twitter. This sounds worse. <laughs> yeah, no. For like one week, one week, Threads popped up. And Threads <gasps> is... Oh. Yeah, Threads I is heard about this. Zuckerberg's answer to Twitter. And it, like, connects to your Instagram account, and it's basically the same thing as Twitter. And for one week, people hopped over to Threads. The problem is Threads isn't fully cooked. It's not ready to be out. Zuckerberg pushed it out just to compete with Twitter because Twitter is, like, terrible right now. So it's just not ready. It doesn't have a search function. It's just, it doesn't have a page for you to, like, Odd see all your followers, right? Odd so, choice to launch it now. Okay. I know why he did it. It's not ready yet. I think six months, it's going to be ready. We'll probably hop over to threads. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. I need my words on that. I don't like Zuckerberg any more than I like Elon. You know, Elon. But uh, it's just Twitter's really, really bad. And we were wondering, you know, we had that episode about freedom of speech on social media. We did. And we were wondering what Elon was going to do with Twitter. and what Burn we... it to the ground. Yeah, no, he destroyed that website. And it's not like... There's more freedom of speech. I mean, technically, if you like being a Nazi and saying the N-word, there's more freedom of speech on Twitter. But for, like, normal people, it's not different. It's just, it's definitely not better. It sounds undeniably worse, but yeah, um, I'm really interested in what the employees at Twitter X, Z, whatever we want to call it, how they're coping and what they think is going on. And also what the leadership is like at that company. Yeah, well, a lot of the employees quit when Elon started taking over. I know he was having trouble keeping employees. I haven't heard anything about them lately. But he's not a good boss by any means. Oh, you mean like erratic, eccentric, confusing? Yeah. Not nice. I mean, he's just... He's terrible all around. It's just been really bad. So the next thing he wants to do is get rid of the blocking feature. He wants to take away the ability for you to block accounts you don't want to see anymore. So you can just be harassed nonstop. Right, right. And I, my theory is that he's doing this is because he saw how many people have blocked him on Twitter. <laughs> what a baby. And he doesn't want that anymore. In fact, I have blocked him on Twitter. I wasn't even following him. And his tweets were still in my feed, which was directly because he had his developers do that. Oh, my gosh. And so I blocked him because I don't want to see him anymore. And so he probably saw that number and was like, okay, that's a feature we got to get rid of. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Didn't you tell me something about how he posted and made it look like his child had a Twitter account but was talking about how great he was or something? Yeah, he has... At least one alt account where he pretends to be his own child. And he talks like a young child would. And he accidentally showed that that was his alt account. And people saw it. It was super weird. So I'm confused because isn't he also really brilliant? <laughs> no. But he, Tesla and SpaceX, those are his companies. He is not an engineer, though. I think he's a good businessman. Are you sure, though? Because then Twitter. I think this is a case of Thomas Edison, where Edison was just a good businessman. He didn't actually invent anything. He owned a company of inventors who invented things. Are okay? you telling me that he didn't invent the light bulb? I am telling you he didn't invent the light bulb. He gets credit for it because he owned the company that invented the light bulb. And so this is the same thing with Elon. He is not an engineer. He doesn't build cars. He doesn't build rocket ships. He owns the companies that do that. I don't think he is that smart. I am not an engineer, and so when he was talking about engineering, I assumed he knew what he was talking about. But when he comes over to Twitter and talks about social media, I know he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's actively ruining the website. And so it seems to me like he was never all that smart to begin with, he just had a lot of money and got lucky in a couple companies. 
but like really lucky. Really lucky. He's had a lot of failed companies too. So there's that. But he's got family money. That's where this money comes from to gamble yeah. with all these companies. Because doesn't his mom have like, I don't know. I'm not going to give correct facts. So I'm going to stop talking. But No, his dad owned like an emerald mine. I was going to say a mine. Yeah, it was like in South Africa, he had an emerald mine. And so he was born into lots and lots of money. And when you have that much money, you can just buy as many companies as you want or start as many companies as you want. And some will be successful, like statistically. So I think that is what's happening. This is a case of Edison, not a case of, ironically, Tesla, who was a Nikola Tesla, who was a real inventor. This is Edison, who was just a dick and a good businessman. Unfortunately. What a shame. A shame. Twitter's gone. We're left with X. Oh, not me. I'm not going to use anything. Well, no, but uh, I'm still posting podcast episodes on Twitter, so please follow us there. (laughs) You know what, everybody? We have other options. It's okay. Yeah, you can just go to Instagram. That's fine. All right. So, last on our list, certainly not least, aliens. That's it. That's the whole topic. Aliens. UFOs, in fact. Actually, they don't call them UFOs anymore. UFOs got rebranded. Along with Twitter and HBO, something very (laughs) well known has been rebranded. You're right. It got rebranded to UAPs, which is... It's never going to catch on. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. I'm not going to use it. We'll still say UFO, but... I kind of like that this one got rebranded, and for the the reason is that like UFO has a certain connotation with it, which is it is not taken seriously. I know. Get out your tin hat. Right, tin foil hats, and this is all kooks and crazies seeing UFOs. Now UAPs are real recorded phenomena that the government has admitted to. Last year, two years ago. Pentagon released UAP footage, UFO footage. I'm just going to say UFO, make it easier. UFO footage that, like, fighter pilots had taken. It might have been two years ago now. I think it was two years ago. It was big news when it happened for, like, a day, and then something else Trump said, you know, made everyone lose their minds about that. And so everyone forgot that the government released footage of UFOs. Okay. This year, something else has happened. A high-level military intelligence official with direct experience working and heading UAP investigation for the Department of Defense has whistleblowed that he has direct knowledge and has reviewed official military documentation of recovery programs of non-human-made craft. These claims are being backed up by additional intelligence officers corroborating his claims both on and off the record. He also testified to Congress under oath for 11 hours about it. Congress has not been told about any of these programs, which has sparked a call for investigations, as that would be illegal withholding that information from Congress. Multiple people from multiple levels of intelligence agencies all whistleblowing something is going on and corroborating what the others are saying. And, like, it's gone so far as, like, even Chuck Schumer has come out with um, a bill, I, I forget what it's called, but it's it's about like exposing the information about UAPs it, effectively. And so it makes sense that the government has programs about these flying objects. They have known about for a long time. They just don't know what they are, where they come from. They could be drones from China, for all we know. And so there's got to be some recovery programs. It just makes sense that there's something flying in our air and they shoot it down, that they're going to recover it to investigate it, okay? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense is that Congress is not aware of it, and they don't know where the money to fund it is coming from. And so that is the illegal part. So even if you don't think there are aliens, which is fair, we still need to know why Congress was not made aware of these programs. Very sneaky, very hidden. Very hidden. So aliens or not, this needs to be investigated. This yeah. is the American people's money being misused in the literal definition of misuse because it's not going through Congress, okay? So it's important for that reason. Now, it's also important 
because they might be aliens. All right, I'm saying it. There might be non-human intelligence. That's what this guy, David Grush, has said. Non-human intelligence. He said those words. Okay? So on July 26th, three men testified to Congress under oath in public testimony. And if you haven't watched it, you should watch it because it's really interesting. So uh, Ryan Graves, an F-18 pilot with 10 years of service, including a part in Operation Enduring Freedom, who was voicing concerns of 30 other pilots, as well as his personal concerns about UAPs. That's a large number. It's a large number. David Grush, a U.S. intelligence officer for 14 years, an Air Force member, a major in the International Guard, and a member of the National Geospace Intelligence Agency. Probably a pretty serious fella. A serious fella. David Fravor, retired commander U.S. Navy who had an encounter with the UAP in 2004. Okay, so these are not just like random conspiracy theory nuts. These are like decorated officers. In the military. In military, in intelligence agencies. Like they haven't just, you know, showed up out of nowhere. These guys have been in this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming forward legally under the Whistleblower Act to whistleblow, (laughs) to to give as much information as they can. To alert the public. To alert the public. And so they're doing it the right way, which means we're not getting a lot of information publicly. Yet, anyways. They're giving this information to Congress behind closed doors and to the Attorney General and to people who can investigate this. They can't give it out publicly yet or they will get arrested. This, is, this isn't public information. If they want to do this the right way, it's going to take time for it to be investigated. Yeah. And so I know some people are really disappointed we didn't get pictures of aliens from these hearings. Some people might say, oh, we didn't get anything useful. They didn't show us. A UFO. They didn't show us aliens. They didn't show us anything. Well, they can't yet. They they can't give out the good stuff yet because they will get arrested and then we'll never hear from them again. They have to do this legally, the right way, one step at a time. And Congress, I don't trust them to do their job right, but someone's going to do their job right. <laughs> Eventually, this has to be investigated. And so they're getting into it now. It's really, really interesting Some good stuff came out of it. I recommend watching it. They talked about specific UAP sightings and, like, recovery programs going back as far as the 1930s. Really, really interesting stuff. Like, government disinformation campaigns and cover-ups. Wait, touch on that more. So the guys flat out said that, like, the government has, first of all, been covering all this up. Since? Since the 1930s. Since World War II. That's such a long time. It's a long time. (laughs) And that's all they're aware of. It could be even longer. Since at least World War II. More than the fact that they're they're covering up, they're trying to make it seem kooky and crazy to talk about UFOs. So that was the misinformation that they were purposely spreading so that it seemed like a silly idea that Roswell would be real. No, right. like, let's make that seem like those are you know, uh, people that don't have day jobs, those people that believe that, you know. Those crazy folks in Exeter, New Hampshire, who saw a UFO. Yep. Yeah. And how will the festival every year? Yeah, they're just kooks, but actually they might have seen something because UFOs are well known to Air Force pilots, as it turns out. Yeah. They see them all the time. In fact, it's so common they're briefed on them before they go out on flights. They said that during the hearings, by the way. So... This is not some small thing. And whether it's a drone from China that we're not aware of the technology, or it's non-human intelligence, either way, it needs to be investigated. It's important that the public knows. So, that's what's been going on with the aliens. They're probably real. That's super fascinating. And it's interesting that it's just all been like purposely spun by the government to be like gaslighting very real information to make it easier for them to just conceal it. Exactly. Yeah. No, this is X-Files in real life. I mean, effectively, the plot of the show was that the government was, like, killing people to cover up their UFO programs. And that is what's happening in real life. Well, I can't say killing people. Don't don't sue me, government. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> you know, they're alleged, allegedly threatening and may have killed some people. So... 
that also came out in the testimony. So, I mean, this is serious stuff. Serious allegations under oath that they're now investigating. So I cannot wait to see what comes of this. Are there any dates to look forward to? Like any other future hearings or it's just, it happens when it happens? Yeah, um, it's a lot of private information at this point. I'd like it if that UAP Information Act passed so we could get some information on this. Otherwise, we're kind of just stuck in a wait and see for right now. Gotcha. I'm willing to bet within the next year we're going to get something. Now, I would love it. Oh, I would love it so much if we got a My Fellow American speech from the president and he just tells us everything. But that's not going to happen. Biden doesn't know where he is. He can't give that speech anyways. (laughs) Yeah. We could ask for a lot less and still not get it. So, yeah. Okay. So, I'm not going to hold my breath, but... We will wait. We're going to wait and see. It's going to be interesting. So now that we've talked about all the important stuff that we've missed, Victoria, are we quitting the podcast? The people want answers. Everyone, everyone, get in line. I'll answer your question in an orderly manner. The answer is no, no, we're not. We just haven't been good about being consistent with the podcast. Um, Really sorry about that. A lot's going on, Um, but we still really enjoy it. And we're going to keep on chugging. We're going to keep on keeping on. I don't know when the next episode's going to come out. I'm going to be fully honest I with you. I feel like it's insincere to make any promises, but yeah. we are not stopping. I'm not even sure when I'm going to publish this one, but <laughs> we're going to do it when we get a chance to do it because we still have fun. And there's always a lot to talk about. Definitely. So follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date. And YouTube. Oh, and YouTube, of course. Keep up to date. There will be new episodes, so look forward to those. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>